Hello, just a uh, reminder that this call is recorded. We'll get started in a few minutes. Uh, does anyone see my uh, shared browser with the agenda? Um, yep. Okay. Yeah, we're able to see it. Thanks. I have also posted the link to the agenda in the, <clears throat> the meeting minutes uh, in the chat here. So please, everyone, add your names here. And we'll be starting in a minute or two. Perfect. So today, I don't think we're going to have Ed in today. So I have to uh, make do with Adam. Cool. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome to the Network Service Mesh Weekly Meeting. So we have this meeting every week at this time on every Tuesday. We have, we also participate on the CNCF Telecom User Group meeting, which occurs every first Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific and every third Monday at 4 a.m. Pacific. We also are going to participate in CNCF Networking Working Group when that resumes. We have a few um, major events coming. Sorry, uh, Fred, just uh, a quick amendment here. So I did participate in the very first Zoom call on the CNCF networking working group last week. It was just a couple of people. It's nothing, nothing really was decided, but uh, I believe that Matt sent uh, an email over the mailing list. So whoever is subscribed there, uh, you can see uh, it's essentially a call for uh, just uh, participation and uh, ideas. Uh, so, yeah. That's more or less it. Ah, perfect. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me know. So I'll I'll go fish the details out later on and stick them in here. Okay. We so we also have the open source summit, which is um, happening in a few days, starting on October twenty eighth and thirtieth. We have an intro to NSM talk by Ivana and Radoslav. And, and I will also be on the CNCF boot, I think, on Monday. I have to check the, the schedule, but I'll be there uh, on the CNCF boot. So if someone is uh, around and want to chat, I'll be at both at the talks of Ivan Radoslav and also at the boot there. So, yeah. Nice. So we also have uh, building the next telco. Um, maybe that I believe that's the uh, the session. Yeah, that's the session with Ivana and Radoslav. In uh, the following month, in November 18th or 21st, 21st, we have KubeCon and Cloud Native Con. So KubeCon and Cloud Native Con. So on the we have uh, NSM Con for people to join. Um, the there is now a wait list for for joining. So if you're interested in going. Please sign up now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to. We'll ho hopefully we'll be able to slot people in. But as of now, the conference is officially uh, is officially full. We also have a NSM developer 
we have a developer talk, excuse me. I'm still getting over a little bit of a cold, so I apologize. Uh, we also have a uh, developer talk uh, for uh, for KubeCon that's coming up. And so it's five cool things that you can do with uh, with NSM that'll have um, Ed Warnicky, Nikolai, and me. So come come feel free to join us and learn about five cool things you can do. Uh, we have FOSDEM coming out. Uh, FOSDEM is uh, uh, located in, actually, where is that located at? So this is Brussels. Campus Salzburg. Yeah, it's, it's Br yeah, Brussels. In Brussels, yes. Yeah. And so, um, there has been some interest in having NSM in the uh, SDN room. Um, and yeah, we, we are considering on our side to, uh, uh, this uh, this invitation. That was that was really nice and good. Uh, we just have to figure out the logistics, and uh, we we'll probably apply. Yeah, and and FOSDEM, if I recall, is is ran by the uh, community, so yeah. it's uh, it, there's a very wide range of interesting talks that are that are there uh, of various uh, uh, of, of various levels, but uh, it's it's a very interesting conference. So definitely, uh, definitely recommend going if you've never gone to FOSDEM before. We have cloud native. We have QCon and Cloud Native Con Europe that has been announced, and they are now starting to accept uh, proposals for Amsterdam, and that will be between March 30th through April 2nd. So, just as a reminder, the proposals close on December 4th. So, make sure you get your proposals in uh, ASAP. So, this is usually a bit earlier than um, than previous years, and that's. I believe because the conference is earlier in the year. And with that, we have the Open Networking and Edge Summit as well, which is going to occur in Los Angeles. Um, and so the event, uh, the event URL will be determined soon. So we'll, we'll hear more about that later. Um, and with that, do we have uh, do we have Lucina on the call? Um, Taylor said that they have a conflict. I guess that uh, no, I don't see her. No. Okay, not a problem. So we have the uh, social media team, and you see, did they give us an update? Read an update for the 22nd. Cool, there it is. So we have eight additional followers now, which brings us to 489. Uh, we're following 31 more people, bringing us to 1980, and we have performed 637 overall tweets with a with which with uh, 30 out of this week. Um, it was posted that NSMCon is sold out. Uh, tele telecom TV video. Uh, so the telecom TV video has been uh, shared. So that has snippets from a variety of people, including me and Taylor. We also have reshared the CNCF NSM webinar and promoted the session at OSSEU. And we have 12 individual session spotlights for NSM Con, which uh, went out. So the plan is to continue to promote uh, KubeCon and um, tweet when the Twitter, Twitter account reaches 500 followers and tweet when the GitHub reaches 300 stars. Um, there's also a contributors podcast, which we just recently did this uh, last week. And so once that has been posted, we will, uh, we will share it with everyone. And so what's interesting with that is it's focused not necessarily on the projects, but on the contributors and how do we how do we grow community and, and so on. So a bit of an interesting podcast. 
we also have given them access to the uh, to the LinkedIn uh, account, and so there's not very many uh, updates there yet, other than we've posted some updates. Uh, and the engagement rate is 10%, just over 10%. And so we'll see how those numbers change over time. And we've also posted links to the webinar, or uh, there was also information that was posted on the webinar and so on. Um, cool. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, um, let's go ahead and move down. Actually, so right now we don't have anything listed on the uh, listed on the agenda. So, is there anything that anyone wants to that anyone wants to discuss? Uh, I have one thing on my mind, but I also know that Henrik from Ericsson is here, and we discussed the other day that he might want to come up with something uh, like a use case or something. So, Henrik, do you have something that you can share with us? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I, I uh, included Roshini who has more of the details oh, and could present perfect. that um, okay. use case. So um, I, I guess, I mean, the idea with this was, I mean, we, we have been um, looking into NSM. Um, <clears throat> and of course, this is all in the context of, of the telecom user group. Uh, but I, and then, then we discussed and, and the idea was that we bring, um, you know, first into this community just to make sure that, you know, it, it's a... Um, um, you know the use case from that point of view looks uh, sane, and then and then we will actually uh, move it into the test bed within the telecom user group as well. So uh, this was just more like a um, a pre check with with uh, the NSM uh, community down here to make sure that we are continuing in the right uh, direction. Um, okay. Do you have something to share, like in terms of? Do you want me to stop sharing so that you can grab the screen and share? Or yeah, what? Roshini, can Roshini, are you? Can you share and present the use case? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yep. we hear you. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, I can share. Uh, let me try to. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, we were working on uh, some high-level uh, use case, uh, which uh, uh, basically covers the end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity. Uh, so this is uh, the scope. Uh, so basically, uh, we want to show end-to-end -end external connectivity and uh, VPN separation uh, by dedicating a specific interface to the application board. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, red reddish uh, uh, um, uh, figure is the application board, and uh, we are not showing any uh, Kubernetes default networking here. Uh, so, uh, instead, we are mainly focusing only on the uh, NSM in this picture. Uh, so, uh, so the main components that we uh, assume uh, to have is like a distributed bridge domain. Uh, network service uh, uh, um, and that uh, uh, will establish point-to-point -point connection to the application ports using bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we expect like an, uh, a layer three forwarder uh, network service endpoint that can uh, that also runs as a port uh, can connect uh, VIP address uh, to the uh, internal load balancer. Uh, for example, VPP uh, in the network service, uh, which basically will load balance the incoming traffic to respective uh, L2 bridge. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, I mean, uh, the uh, bridge domain network service we have uh, tried out, and uh, with the help of Nikolai, yeah. uh, we, we <clears throat> have done some changes, and we uh, did a pull request, so that's available. But then uh, we are also looking at something uh, like the distributed bridge domain uh, uh, network service uh, that will be like uh, sc scattered over the uh, different uh, class, I mean, different uh, worker nodes. And basically, and then we will also l are interested in uh, layer three uh, forward uh, uh, network service that will expose the uh, VIP. And 
this uh, uh, shows like a gateway router uh, will be like configured with ECMP. So whenever a traffic with a specific VIP reaches gateway router, uh, the gateway router will ECMP uh, the traffic with to one of the node where this uh, L3 forwarder is running. Uh, so the CNCF test but could use any uh, software router to simulate this gateway function gateway router functionality um, and uh, and our uh, wish list or the uh, expected uh, final use case is to have no NAT, uh, but which is not uh, currently supported but uh, uh, the expected no NAT is supported with the LV yeah, I mean, we be we need to have multiple addresses. Uh, oh, continue. I, I yeah. can show the other. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is the uh, basic use case that uh, we would like to see in uh, CNF test. But um, should we show the next slide, or do you have any question or comments? And um, do you think that this is this makes sense? This uh, use case. Uh, so from from um, any same point of view, this makes sense uh, as you said you already started working with uh, with the examples and uh, you know having this uh, layer to bridge uh, you know uh, cnf implemented um, or improved uh, so uh, yes uh, this definitely we can start actually working with you or, or kind of i mean if you need any help and support on bringing this to uh, I would suggest to to try to have something in the examples repo that can then easily be migrated to the CNF testbed. But uh, if this would make sense for the CNF testbed, this will will mean will have to be discussed and synced with the people from the CNF testbed. And unfortunately, today they have a conflict. So Taylor, uh, Lucina, no, no one, no one from from the team is there. So probably this needs to be brought brought up with them also on Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that, that they, sh they, they will not oppose to have uh, I mean, as many use cases as, uh, as makes sense uh, to people, as especially that you have some practical, let's say, um, background here. I mean, it's not just like completely made out of thin air. It's like <laughs> something useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, uh, for us, uh, for as a community, uh, I mean, sometimes it's hard because you know uh, I'm more or less working in the examples repo, figuring out you know simple uh, ICMP responder. Okay, it's kind of a, it's a proof of something, but I mean this makes a lot more sense. So um, yeah, okay. I but then I think also I mean if if, if the, <clears throat> we can start to also then um, provide the similar thing in, into the kind of um, format that we expected in in the um, in the test bed, uh, and of course, then it can be further discussed there as well, I guess. And, uh... Uh, yeah, so uh, my experience so far with the CNF test bed, uh, uh, because I kind of prepared the two examples that are out there, uh, I am implementing something that's not touching the hardware at all, uh, but uh, in a way that they can just take it and then apply it with their of course, if you are willing to contribute directly and straight directly to the CNF testbed, that's of course not not a problem. Um, I would prefer if we have something that we can replicate in the examples. But if you think that this is not suitable or you don't want to do it, um, whatever reasons, I personally don't have any any problems with that. I think the example is good as well because it shows the use of NSM directly. I think that's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. No, yeah, okay. just just to add from a CNF test perspective, I think this would oh, yeah, be a good enough use case. I neglect, like. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it, it's definitely something we could look into. Hmm. Yeah, in the in in, in the in the short term, uh, one of the things that we had spoken about before was uh, the uh, ECMP uh, and the and the router on top, and so. In the in the short term, um, I think it's okay to simplify it and, and hard code it. In the long run, it'd be interesting to get a uh, um, an NSM to stick something in front of it, so that, that way we can make a request and receive connection parameters to it uh, on on demand. So, uh, but no, to me this this looks like a really good use case. Uh, this is uh, this is actually very close to. Um, 
there's a, a specific use case that uh, that uh, people have been wanting in Kubernetes for for a while, and I'm there's not there's not too many implementations of it where you have ECMP control a set of gateway routers with a with a uh, floating IP that spans across multiple uh, multiple routers. You could have multiple paths. Um, and so this is actually the first step towards achieving that as well is um, is approaching this particular uh, this particular path and so so I think this is an excellent first step and thank you for for bringing this up then I have a I have a toy service that I'm playing with this is Anders but I'm sitting with Rosini and I have some question about it if I could share that then I could get some some of your views on the direction how to actually solve this because it's part of this uh, as well. Well, we we do have time, so let's go ahead and uh, and, and bring it up. Uh, sure. I can stop and you can share. And how do I, I do share? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This one. Share screen. Yeah, thank you. So this is a service that I actually have running, but but I get into some uh, because when I want to automate this, then I think that the VIP address, as you see, this is LB VIP. No, no. Yeah, do everybody see the picture? Yeah, we do. Mm, the LB LB VIP. I can set that in the manifest of the service. So actually, in the service here, I have all the information I need. But what I also need to do is to, in the client side, I would like to create the GRE tunnel devices with the VIP address on, and I would like to set the route. Uh, probably I would like to do a source routing to say anything that has a VIP address as a source should go back to this domain. And how I would do that, I'm not really seeing. Should I make my own init container that actually, and, and can I tag some extra data in the protocol from the to the NSM that I can receive in the in the init container of the client. So to be clear, is is what you want a direct uh, server server response? Yeah, because I, then I don't get any nothing as well, and this is really there's nothing else that I've seen that can that can do no NAT in in the Kubernetes as well than, than like this thing. Yeah, so direct server response is a little bit more of an interesting uh, use case. So uh, within NSM, there should not be any problems with uh, with performing a uh, direct server response itself because uh, what you want is you want your payload uh, in this scenario uh, instead of IP, you want you want to have uh, a, something that terminates uh, something that allows you to have the uh, the tags that you that way you can know where the uh, uh, where the where the uh, response is, or um, uh, another option might be to have the source uh, the source destination preserved. But, yeah, it, um, it, yeah, it works already. It's just that I need to do the I need to add the GRE tunnels on the client by hand. Otherwise, I mean, this setup I, I use the LB or VPP, and it puts a good GRE tunnel. You know. Yeah, okay. I will show them. I cannot point. Yeah, yeah that, that 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 makes sense. And so, um, yeah. so here is the main list that I get uh, in the bridge, and and those are like going straight to the client through NSM. So if if I create a GRE tunnel on the client by hand, and I put a route saying that uh, if if the source address is a VIP address, default, I put the routing table and default route that back to the NSM zero. Then this setup works fine. I mean, and I can even test it from another container since the OpenVPN server is going through the Kubernetes network service. Yeah, this makes sense. And so, yeah, I think what um, so we we can put arbitrary, um, um, I guess you would say, um, it's it's as part of the change. There's a couple ways we can do this, but one one potential way is. Uh, we could we could build a uh, a small network service that sits in front of the uh, that sits in front of the application that mm -hmm. uh, knows how to read off those particular uh, labels and, and tags and then knows and then knows how to mangle the packet properly or packet to treat it mm -hmm. properly so that when it returns 
uh, it, it builds the packet in the way that you expect and then forwards it off to the, um, to, to the correct, uh, uh, to the correct destination from there. So it's, um, it, it's, very, it's actually very similar to what OpenShift did. So o OpenShift has um, a uh, um, HA proxy that sits in front of each uh, in front of each uh, uh, pod, um, and so when they would receive traffic, they were able to to treat it there. So it's a similar it's a similar path. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this is this is definitely this is definitely possible, and I think we I, I think we'll have to build a. Uh, one option is we may have the building network service that can that can perform the the uh, packet treatment on the on the header in order mm -hmm. to in order to mangle it properly. But I this sh this should be a very easy uh, this should be a very easy path. But, but when you say adding adding extra information in, in this connect request that comes to the bridge domain, you know where you have the IP context and all this kind of stuff. Is it, can I add data to that buffer, to the gRPC buffer that I get, that get transferred back to the, to the client? In yeah, the, in that's, the that, that's possible as well. So when you do the initial connection, yeah. uh, you, you could pass the, uh, the label information right there. Then you don't have to worry about uh, additional labels or, or encapsulations or anything like that. Uh, and then just mangle that's it on the way out. Yeah, yeah that's, can... that's a... Yeah, we, we, that's that's definitely a, that's definitely a, a, a way to do it as well. But I'm looking at this. There is a context, the something dot the proto or something like this in, in the in the source code. Is it just to add to that one, or is there some way of getting in the extra data in response? Yeah, we we can add it. Uh, we, we can add it into that context. And so when you when you do the initial connection. Uh, uh -huh. And you, and you build it and you create the interface. Part of the uh, requ part of the request and response is you can add uh, arbitrary labels. Uh, okay. And so, in this scenario, our, our one of our plans in the long run is we want to try to standardize uh, some of the labels, mm -hmm. so that that way we're not um, we don't end up with a plethora or an explosion of of random labels, which makes people incompatible. But right. in the in the in the short term, don't worry about that. Uh, in the short term, like you know, just feel free to create a label and stick it in there. Yeah, cool, I would do that because uh, I saw the labels, but I thought they they were like in the other direction that you got labels from the client. But I can add labels on the res on the response as well. Then. Yeah, that's that's correct. You can add labels on the on the response. Yeah. And Perfect. if if you have trouble with it or if it doesn't work for some reason, let us know and we'll we'll fix it. But uh -huh. uh, I was right. Uh, labels. So then I can make my own init container, and I will not co use the web admission hook to, because then I can create interfaces in that one. The degree at the yeah. yeah. Exactly, and so yeah. you just create create your own client and move yeah. it from there. Um, yeah. There's there's two other things about this though. So one of them is if you're uh, if you're using a kernel interface as your client, mm -hmm. then the kernel interface uh, will likely May or may not have access to uh, to change the um, uh, to change its own to, to change the source code. Yeah, yeah. So you need privileges in order to in order to do that. And that's why that's why I was suggesting that you could have a uh, a, a short a small uh, network service endpoint there that that's part of the chain that is able mm -hmm. to do that packet treatment on its behalf without the privileges. But if you're using something like Memif, or mm -hmm. then you can you can set it yourself. Like you you have the ability to craft your own packets. But if you're using kernel interfaces, you may need one extra component in there uh, in order to avoid giving that pop. I see what you're saying. Could but could I run an init container as privilege, or will that like poison the complete container? Will it, the I know, you, you cannot. It, it's it's all or nothing. If you run in the container as privileged, or they're all privileged. So and that's why I'm suggesting that we can we can inject something in the middle, and mm -hmm. that uh, that is able to perform that packet treatment, and yeah. and and that would that would be the um, uh, the recommended way uh, at, yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I will start to try to do a privilege mode with the client um, to see, just to see if it, how it works because it's it is cool the way it works, I think. And then we can think about the other. Yeah, you because, can. Yeah, but otherwise I will get the, an extra jump with a mem if and and the kernel again, won't I? If I have. Yeah, this, uh, you can. Uh, you, you can start it with privilege as well, and then work your way mm -hmm. down. And so, yeah. if you want to start it off with privilege, that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but just make uh, just make sure that that, that you know, we'll have to make sure there's a path to to unprivileged in the long run because you don't want a bunch of containers out there with uh, with root access. Yeah, 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 of course. But this is more or less just, it's a toy. I mean, something to use that. But it's cool because yeah, it I, shows we can run no nested load balancing. I mean, I think this. I read about the load balancer, load balancer in VPP, and it's kind of cool since it's a hashing load balancer, so we can run them in parallel without connection, without session saving and synchronization and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so we'll, let's go ahead and give it a give it a try. And yeah, feel free to, to start it off with privilege, and then mm -hmm. we can we can help you once once that's working. Uh, we yep. can help you bring down the privileges. Depending mm. on the on depending on the implementation you took. Yeah, I think so. That would be good because uh, I mean the, the picture of Trina showed is probably where we where we will that's where we will go. But I think we need so to solve these problems before mm. we can do anything with that actually. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, if you need any help, please join us on on uh, Slack. You can also come here and ask questions, and we'll we'll try to help. Um, mm. For these for these type of things. Uh, my strong recommendation is to ask questions on Slack because we're we're able to to spend more time uh, answering the questions uh, yeah. question properly on on the details. So high level stuff. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Hmm? Oh. So is it, do you have any other questions on uh, or? Uh, I I don't have any more. I don't go to Rosina or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yesterday Tomas actually mentioned something about 5G or something. Was he referring to this use case, or is there something else going on? No, no. I think it was one of these use cases to still, you know, have this proper then VPN separation on some of the uh -huh. you know, still protocols that will go into the uh, 5G. So I think it was from that point of view. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then um, one quick question: Was that yeah. second use case? Is your intention to eventually put that on the CNF testbed as well? You mean the one with open open VPN tunnel or what? Yeah. That the, uh, I can, example. I can, that, that one I can put on examples, but but I know because it's cool because you can run it without having all the networking set up i mean you can just run it with the normal kubernetes set up and tunnel your way in through through kubernetes so i don't know if that's for cnf test but, but for examples maybe we can do it cool mm -hmm. yeah as an example it would be fantastic as well so yeah. we would more than happy we'd be more than happy to have that as an example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let us know if you need any assistance any changes in apis in you know, infrastructure, whatever. I mean, it's all about the users in the end. I mean, we can mm -hmm. do whatever we, we want, but uh, uh, it's most important that people like you. So thank you for doing this. Um, okay, uh, so uh, I have some something that I want to just bring up. Maybe we'll finish probably next week. I don't know, uh, about the forthcoming release that we are planning. I wish that uh, Ed was here around. I know that he's going to to listen through this later, so hello, Ed. Um, so uh, if there's anything else that uh, some of the people want to bring up, I know that, I mean, it would have been good if we have added here, but if someone wants to, there's a Jai here, maybe, I don't know, Matt. Uh, anyone wants to bring something? Uh, <clears throat> okay, then then I will I will go quick quickly through what I have here. So um, yeah, we did our last release like a couple of months ago, in June, whatever. Uh, I hope this time we will do better. I think that we are in a much better situation or a little bit better what we want to do. Uh, also, we have pretty good uh, Helm charts already, which allows us to actually. Uh, 
their product to I think uh, good enough re release. Um, so uh, it's going to be 0 0.2. Uh, I was hoping to label this a beta release. I don't know if uh, people will agree with that. Do we think that it's uh, already in, in this stage, the project? I think it's kind of. I mean, maybe we have some rough edges here and there, but I would consider it a beta. Somehow, I mean, alpha sounds a lot more scarier. Uh, if people come up with use cases already, then probably <laughs> we deserve to to label us a beta. I don't know, Andre, Fred, uh, someone else. How do you do you feel about that? Uh, Sorry, it cut off for me in that last part of that last section. Can you repeat the uh, question one more time? Uh, yeah, I was uh, saying, uh, does people feel, do people feel that, that we can call this a beta be version, beta? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with calling it a beta. I mean, we have a lot of really amazing uh, features that have been packed in that uh, they're not hardened yet, but uh we're oh, we're getting closer to hitting the um the set of features that we want to deliver on the first on, on the first major version so uh we have um things like um spiffy and and uh spire we have the open policy and stuff that's been going on you know and all, all necessary stuff in order to uh, in order to properly yeah the interdomain stuff is is part of it so we have a lot of really amazing, um, amazing things, and it's starting to, you know, we're we're starting to, to get uh, it to settle on a on a set of features, uh, and we're talking about okay, how do we harden features much more than uh, than how do we add new features as we were even just a few months ago? So I think we're we're I think a beta is a is a good uh, name for it. Mm -hmm. Andre. Are you around? Andre? Uh, okay, he's probably just uh, following. Uh, okay, then then we probably will have to figure out a name. Uh, last time it was a constellation called, uh, uh, what was the name? A, a, uh, Andromeda. And Andromeda, yeah. Mm. Okay, maybe we have to figure out, not maybe, but we have to figure out a constellation with B. Maybe we'll just create a poll for this. We have to figure out a couple of names. That's not that important, yeah. it's just, yeah. There, there is a constellation called Borealis Corona. <laughs> and what's interesting about it is the Borealis Corona is the crown of Ariadne. Oh, okay. <laughs> So that, that's my recommendation. Uh, I'm happy with others too. It, it's a bit of a, of a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crown. Yeah, sounds good. Um, then um, we have, I actually, I have a specific uh, um, proposal for when do we want to branch free somehow that we can, you know, have a couple of weeks before KubeCon. So I was hoping that not the next Monday, but the Monday after that, like 4th of November. Uh, that's a bit aggressive maybe, uh, but maybe if we can figure out in the following two weeks what we, or maybe fifth, uh, let's say fifth, because it's on the, on the W, on the work group call. Um, yeah. We have two weeks, so if we can figure out what are the, the um, standing problems that we have to, to stabilize and fix, maybe we can do it. Uh, of course, nothing is fixed. We just have to figure out what we want to do. Um, so how does folks feel about this? Is it a bit aggressive? Yeah, I'm... I'm happy with that particular uh, that particular path. I think we we should ask Ed about how he feels because he's been doing a lot of the refactoring. Yeah. We should ask him how he feels about November fifth 
um, as a as a branch freeze date. Yeah, we we also have two two options. We can just say like from now on, like from today, from this <laughs> from this uh, second, we can just stop uh, being adventurous in merging things uh, that are not uh, we're not really sure about, and just start merging st stabilizations. And I know that JWT there's something about security to be to come, and then just continue uh, like in the master, just trying to stabilize, 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 and then. A week before KubeCon, we just you know branch release uh, because we'll know that that everything is uh, you know stable. If we just do stabilizations for the next month, we I guess that will be will be good to go. Uh, yeah, the other option is to just branch and try to stabilize there and continue uh, playing in master. But that's something that we need to figure out internally. So if someone has any any opinions here, any suggestions. Uh, uh, Nikola, at least I think we should try to, to switch from the uh, local and remote to unified APIs. Oh, uh, wasn't that? Release. Wasn't yeah, that uh, at the thing? moment we have adapters. Oh, wow. Stations. So we're trying with small steps to do a replacement of the old uh, code with new one. Yeah. So I think uh, this kind of uh, changes should be approved in any case. If okay. They will be small Perfect. enough to. Mm -hmm just review very easy yeah 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 of course that 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 makes total sense um okay so who is working on that you or yeah yeah i'm working on it uh -huh. okay then 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 you can just put labels on the prs with uh, 0 0.2 we have label yep. already okay just, okay okay just put them and uh, make sure to prioritize this great um, and then uh, before the previous release, I took the time to rename the API to alpha. Now, if we decide that it's going to be a beta, maybe we can just change our API to beta. Um, you know, maybe we'll stay for a little bit longer uh, on this uh, beta version of the API, but uh, I don't think that we, we have some something scheduled to to change that much to call it as unstable as an alpha. Um, so these are more or less my thoughts around uh, this uh, release. Cool. So I think. Um... I think that we probably need to have a conversation with Ed as well and ask him his um, his recommendation. My my recommendation at this point would be to make the assumption that uh, do we do we want to set November fifth as, as the date or uh, for for the branch and uh, once we rally around with Ed we can we can finalize it. But just to give people some um, some some goals to to work with at the moment. So. Uh, how do you feel about that, Nikolai? I'm sorry, I missed the, 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 the last part. Oh, some, some, some broken. Uh, and, no, I'll, 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 I'll rephrase. So, show, should we set November 5th as the tentative date at the moment? Yeah. And uh, once we get uh, the comfort level of, of what that is, because he was working on the refactor, to see if he thinks it'll uh, be all wrapped up by then. Then we can solidify that just to give people a, a goal to to aim for at the moment, and then we can we can promise not to move it forward, but not promise not to move it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Cool. So let's say November fifth is the tentative branch date. Um, so we will uh, we'll finalize that soon. Okay. Cool. Is, is there anything else that we want to discuss? Mm, I don't know. Andre, on your side, something? Or Ilya? No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, on last week, I think we merged uh, the SDK to local and remote separation. Yeah. So it's uh, chained uh, network service manager internally now. And mostly that's all from my side. 
I think we updated the PP agent to 2.2 or 2.3 and updated the Kubernetes to latest. Yeah, Kubernetes is uh, latest now. This means that you have to use the latest Helm to 2.15 release in order for it to work. Uh, other than that, yeah. Ah, that's, that's good to know. It um, <laughs> Just as a recommendation, if, if we need a specific version of Helm, we should make sure that we encode that in somewhere. Uh, although it's a bit hard because we tell people to do Helm install and we, I don't think we have a way to enforce that. But um, Yeah, I mean, you cannot, you cannot install um, uh, like Helm on newer Kubernetes in any case. I mean, you cannot do Helm in it. It just doesn't work. On one sixteen. So yeah. So one last um, one last question as well. Does does anyone have uh, access to the AWS uh, infrastructure? Or uh, um, yeah, I think I do. Let's take this offline. Cool. Uh, with that, is, is there anything else anyone wants to bring up, or shall we close it up? Okay, so we'll go ahead and close it up. Uh, first, I wanted to thank the Ericsson people for uh, for bringing their use cases and discussing it here. So that's that was really helpful. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I and I circled back with Taylor and let him know that we covered it all. So he's uh, partially informed and excited. Uh, and Taylor mm -hmm. is the person who is the lead for the CNF testbed. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, uh, we will. We will have the um, we, we will have next week's meeting at the same time, same place. And uh, thank you everyone for attending, and we'll see you all again next week. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.